going by yourself by myself just backpacking backpacking in africa yeah no girl with you nothing no girl just like which which one of these countries had the most beautiful girls though oh that's that's a good question that That is a good question you know um i would say (laughs) (laughs) oh actually i'm gonna What what women in Dr. P.O.G. <laughs> <laughs> Why was you saying that? Remember we did like the night show stuff. Anyways, um, I was gonna say yeah, no, no. You, this girl says something about Jesus Christ. I think let's just let's just talk about it a little bit. So, do you feel like women want Jesus? That's the kind of men that would, a woman wants. Someone like Jesus Christ. No, um, these girls want Batman. Yeah, no. They say they want Jesus exactly, but they end up with Satan. <laughs> No, 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 no. Write that down. <laughs> I can't no. deal. <laughs> deal my demons. My first straight to the point. <laughs> uh, yeah, they end up by saying, this is really not Yeah, for real though. Anyways, we've got an amazing guest in the building. Yep. Mr. Pan Africa. Yeah. Pan African man. Yeah. Pan African man. Shout That's what it's Mr. called. Mr. M. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Malobi in the building. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. How are you guys doing? It's been good. Yeah, we're chilling. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So we had an eventful day getting into the studio. Yeah. First of all, shout out to the studio management for keeping, <laughs> keeping it open. For giving keeping us... Keeping it locked. <laughs> for helping us get here in one piece without losing our... Sh- <laughs> Mama, love, like, we almost died in the rain to get here. <laughs> I'm, t- yeah, I'm telling you. Rain, everything. Well, we've, we're giving you guys content in between. This was the week that and I realised Nigeria is, is a ghetto. What, what made you realise that? The rain. The rain, yeah. When is flooding in Lagos specifically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen flooding. You want you want to say Lagos, not Nigeria? Yeah, Lagos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lagos is literally like a big dirty swimming pool. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> so you you not live in no a big dirty in swimming pool. That's a very act- accurate. Look analogy. at the look at the water on that riverside. Look how dirty that water is. Oh. Niggas cars you can probably... are uh, fucking up in the water. <laughs> I saw somebody's car submerged underneath the pavement. It's bad. It's that bad. is terrible, man. Uh, it's, yeah. it's you know what I mean. It's a city we live in. We go off, make make way around, figure it out, yeah, yeah, yeah. and get ahead. So, my lady, tell us a, b- a little bit more about um, your Pan African traders. What is it about? What is it? Okay. What's it looking um, to? So when I when I originally moved back to Nigeria. Mm. Um, I had so many different ideas that I just wanted to try out. Um, I believe in just failing quickly, learning, and then mm. improving on it. So um, one of them was like building an, an Alibaba for Africa, right? So like an uh, international trade marketplace yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, based on Africa, yeah. intra-Africa trade. Um, but one thing that I learned um, pretty quickly was that we're not ready for that. Nah, because nah. first of all, we don't even have enough exporters to warrant a marketplace because in marketplace yeah. buyers and sellers if mm. you don't have enough sellers then it's not really a marketplace so do you think we have a selling problem or a buying problem that's interesting yeah you have, we don't have enough exporters yeah we we don't have enough well we don't have enough good quality well vetted exactly exporters. that's what i was going to say the quality yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 there's people that are doing small stuff like even i export a little bit here and there but like in terms of large scale yeah you have alam which is a big multinational and you know they do sesame seed and all that but mm. Like compared to like other countries, like mm. you know, you hear like Peter will be like giving all these stats about how Nigeria, like, you know, we export worth thirty billion, and then Vietnam is like two hundred billion or something mm. crazy like that. It's because we just don't we don't produce enough. To us, it seems like a lot because we're here and like, oh my god, like this guy's moving ten containers this mm. month. But like on the international stage, like it's nothing. It's- nah. So so basically, do you think the international world would would kind of buy our goods if we do more exporting? Yeah, but we it but we'd have to make our stuff well prepared. We have exactly. to package it right. We have to mm-hmm. do exactly. the Sanitary right due standards. diligence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Food safety. Yeah, I've heard that, that Ghanaian stuff. goods are favored over Nigerians. We don't meet the sanitary yeah. standards. There's an agreement between 
Africa and the US where duty you can get free duty free goods. What's that thing called? Again? Yeah, uh, Agoa. Agoa, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. with Agoa, we could have taken a lot of advantage o- over there. Okay. But apparently, Ghana seems to be doing better than us because mm. Nigerian sanitary standards mm-hmm. and quality of our things mm-hmm. that we produce mm-hmm. to export mm-hmm. apparently it's not up to standard. And, and yeah. our logistics as well. Like mm. the cost of sending goods out of Nigeria is way more than like. Ghana, Togo, all these other mm. countries. Why oh, is wow. that though? Interesting. Um, all the, many the reasons, rain. like sometimes is call, some people, call, one of my friends calls it illegal, illegal taxes. So it's like, you know, like on the way there, the <laughs> guy that stops your truck on the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. like collecting money here and there. And then like, the lubricant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like at the end, when it gets to the port and then there's delays at the port as well. Mm. So, and a papa port is just way too congested. So there's just so many reasons why it, exporting so even me like i export a little bit mm. the last time i exported by sea i did it through ghana oh nice so you just to so ghana even first. even it's sending it from nigeria to ghana and well, exporting was still cheaper oh wow than then sending from it nigeria export. from nigeria wow so these are like we've got so many like bottlenecks with the export so that's why i realized and i was like look i need to create businesses that make exporting easier mm. before we get to that stage of just having a marketplace we need to have like we need to financing we need better logistics mm. we need, so these are the so pan-african traders has changed from like an online marketplace to a series of technologies that that supports help. that yeah Love that's that. that's Love good that. yeah no, and talk about that like tell us how you even got here because you're one of us you moved back which is crazy yeah and then also talk about, because you have your own pan-african traders podcast and mm. website so yeah tell us about both of those stories yeah so how i got that got, got here actually um so first of all there was a couple of reasons why I moved back. It was a mix of homesickness and also in the in the UK corporate world that I was working. Although I was making a good living, living and all that, I could see the ceiling. I could see like, okay, cool. Like if I kept pushing on, yes, I could maybe become a manager. I'm not going to become CEO of this market research company. I was doing- Are you a market research? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I was doing sales for a market research company. Interesting. Um, and yeah, and I could see, just see the ceiling and I was just like, look, if I if I move back to Nigeria, it's higher risk, higher reward. So yeah. if I move back, maybe it might be more difficult, but I can make way, way more at the end of my life. So mm. um, that was one reason. And the second reason was um, I was watching a lot of these like, African YouTubers like what am I and love stuff. Him. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. and Tayo are not. Yeah, God, yeah, yeah but him as well. They brainwash me through my TV and love yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get here and it's like, oh, it's not. <laughs> 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 but still, they at least they at least get you like They're hyped not, about yeah. Yeah. New yeah. Africa, Defo, young yeah. people changing the narrative. Hundred percent. So like those are the main reasons, and then yeah, and then I made the move back, and then not long after I moved back. Um, my my dad was retiring and so he was retiring from his he owns his own business and none of my brothers were moving back so i kind of was left with you mm, know running nice. the family business yeah. Yeah. yeah so in addition to that i started like working on businesses that i think would help um diasporans or anyone just to improve the economy basically mm. are you like towards the youngest or the oldest of the in your siblings there's there's five of us i'm, yeah. I'm number three Five boys. Yeah, in interesting. So you're in you know, number three is you think they're the ones that always let to do themselves. They nobody cares what they're doing. Yeah, you kind of. You know, it's, it's kind of true because like no one's really looking. <laughs> no one's really looking. They just surprised there was a mad to them. Like, oh, you ain't <laughs> like <laughs> the ugly duckling. Uh, I, I would. I would hate Are you to be number, number one. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just. Oh, you're number one. Huh? I'm number one. I'm the oldest oh, okay. child. How many? How many you guys? I've got. We've got two boys in my family. So oh, I've always. Okay, had, I've always okay. had to stress on my You've head. Had the pressure. I've had stress on my head. I came out the yeah, room, boy. That's what you're <laughs> right. no, I would hate that. I, I love, I love being number three because it's like you don't get too much pressure and you don't get too much like relaxedness. So it's just like a nice balance. Mm, mm, and so mm. yeah, I would, I would hate to be number one. Like, okay. Too much responsibility. Yeah, that's that's So, then, so then you, so you came back. Like, did you plan it? Did you not plan? Because I know we just fell into it, us two. But did you? Um, you, so you just decided to start the to take up the business. Actually, so it kind of happened organically. So what happened okay. at first was like I was in the UK. And then I was watching all these What Am I videos and I was like, I saw videos of like Sierra Leone, Senegal and I was like, all right, I'm going to go to these countries. Nice. And so like, I took like two weeks off work and then nice. I went to like Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, oh my days. Sierra Leone. By yourself? By myself, just backpacking. Backpacking? In Africa, yeah. Sick, sick, <laughs> no sick, girl with you, nothing. No girl, just like... Oh, which, no. which one of these countries had the most beautiful girls though? Ooh, that's, that's a <laughs> good Talk question. Talk to us. That is a good question, you know. Um, I would say 
<laughs> oh, actually, I'm gonna actually. I, I, I don't, there was actually not. There wasn't a country that was like stand out. <laughs> there was like girls. a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say, I don't know. There was in in Senegal. Senegal, yeah. Mm. In in the. But like different parts, like you know how like Nigeria, like the north is different from the south. Mm. Like so, like in the southern part of Senegal, I was like okay, okay. He even analyzed the location. Yeah, I right. mean, I was, I was like, so I was literally backpacking, and when I mean backpacking, I was like taking house house. cars, like in in um in west in the francophone countries they call mm. it um, um tuk -tuk. I think they call it in Nigeria. I don't know what they call it. Like you know with the shared taxi thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah like so, Uber pool. No, no, tuk, no, no. Tuk, the tuk, long tuk, road, tuk. the long road ones. Yeah. Oh, do you like, there's no app. in Africa. Yeah, they just yeah. jump in and then they move to the next other African country. Yeah, yeah. Like the security. Nah, if yeah. it's, it's it's like the local taxi is like security so, is not the biggest problem. As you were there. backpacking through Africa, security was never like a thing on your mind. Or I, I, to be honest, I wasn't thinking about it. Um okay. And yeah, I wasn't really thinking about it, and it wasn't an issue. The only issue I had was because I didn't take my yellow card. You know, that's your um, yellow fever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I had problems yeah, with this yeah, when we moved yeah. to Ghana. Oh, well, trying to Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to go across West Africa, make sure yeah, you, you have, have that yellow, that card, yellow card, vaccine, yeah. Because they're going to harass the Interesting. hell out of Interesting. Yeah, they took so much money from me, like... What, for not having the yellow card? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the, the Can you, can you um, put on vaccine. an accent? Do you know how to... I tried, you just I tried given... all... The, I spoke French, I spoke English, I spoke pigeon, I, spoke, I did all of You're it. You're just using private school, private school boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah I was saying, they just heard it. They were like, yeah, money, money, yeah, money, yeah, money, 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 yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to hear right now. <laughs> None of it worked. And like, but to be honest, like I, I, I didn't feel unsafe at any point, but it was, it was not comfortable. But I was very happy I did that because I went to places that you wouldn't normally go to mm. if you just went like flew down to there. And oh yeah, true, true, true. So, yeah. Get to the I'm spots. not gonna lie to you guys. I'll show my guys calling my phone. Right now. <laughs> really? <laughs> go on, pick up, pick up, just pick, pick up, up, just pick up. <laughs> okay, you've told us okay how you came back, got into family business, mm, yeah, and then now, but the actual like importing, exporting work that you do, mm -hmm. how have you found that? Um, okay, so it's it's interesting because how I started was because I was still in the UK and I was um, bringing in some food from Nigeria called Fonio, which is what I export. Mm -hmm. um, and I started doing a very small scale, you know, 50 kilograms, 100 kilograms here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and then because of my experience, I started understanding the challenges that other people were having. And so that's why I started creating other solutions. So one of the biggest challenges that I found is that people are trying to export smaller amounts of goods. And so if you don't have like um, enough money to pay for a full container, mm. like it's, it's quite expensive. expensive. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. How like, much is a full container? It could be anything for $4,000, $5,000, $2,000. It depends on like time of year and all these kinds of things. Mm. But um, yeah, so basically what I did was, you know, I started this company called Kadan Kadan, which is this is the first company on the Pan-African trade. I remember that's when he gave me his business card on Kadan Kadan. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one is all about groupage. So basically people sharing containers. So you know how you have like Uber Pool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to share taxis? It's like sharing containers. So, um, and what's and the, the infrastructure for that? Is it an app, a website? It, like how do I... Yeah, so it's an app. Um, we haven't launched the app yet, but we're doing the groupage service at the moment, but the okay, app is nice. coming soon. Yeah. Because I got some um, feedback from a mentor of mine who was saying like, look, just do lean, just build it, do it manually. And then once you know how the flow works, build yeah, the people app. People say that actually. Well, a, lot, yeah. a lot of feedback at startup stage is to not do the big thing straight away. Yeah. Mm. It's to just learn start, as you go yeah. along, just yeah. start something. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we're just, we're just doing it on a small scale. We got people that are early stage exporters to share the container. And like you said, it's just, we're just the, the bridge. So we're not like a logistics company. Mm -hmm. So each country that we're working with, we have like, uh, logistics specialists mm -hmm. so they handle all the back end mm. all the documentation all the hard work mm -hmm. we're just literally just connecting people like okay say you want to put like 500 kilograms you want to mm. put one ton mm -hmm. i want to put five tons we all come together so that's what our app does oh, just connecting yeah, just the manage, people. Yeah, and then yeah, in the no, back yeah. end we have the logistics providers who facilitate all the hard oh, like, so you're just the integrator work. that's interesting yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. um yeah integrator that's what it is yeah do yeah. you feel like to move back to nigeria we need to be mad there's something mad about us that i've moved back because doctor says this i need to know because i've started to believe um, what he said i i would say it's the word is not mad I'd, I'd say you'd have to think outside of the norm you'd have to be you have, you have to be outside of the normal abnormal 
So if mm. I, I wouldn't say abnormal is the same as mad. As mad. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. A, a mad has a kind of negative connotation where it's like abnormal does as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, abnormal. yeah, abnormal does, but like it's like outside of normal. Okay, maybe that's a lighter way of putting it because it's like it's not that you're you're losing it. It's just that you're you're brave enough and and you you're thinking way 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 beyond what you're cu- currently capable of doing. Mm. Interesting. So it's just not. Yeah, you, I don't know. You could use the word mad, but I think it's. That kind of has the wrong connotation to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's just... the what's the most amazing thing that you realized in Nigeria that you didn't know before? Obviously, I love the weather. Um, really, the weather is dope. I hate though. the weather, but it's just because it's humid. That's the only issue. I'm, I'm oh, a winter babe. I'm a, I'm a bomber jacket girl. So really, coming oh, yeah. back to live in a hot country has wrecked wow. me. Mm. So you'd rather be too cold than too hot. Yeah. Really? I think okay. it's easy to Fair sleep enough. when you're too cold. I think my body likes it when mm. I'm too cold. Like, if, oh. the fact that the, 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 being hot in a hot country messed me up. Really? Oh, my health so. has been decimated. No, that's, coming back that's here. mad. Yeah, I'm still adjusting back. Yeah, I'd, ra- I'd rather be too hot. I'd rather be with a fan and naked in my bed than then being China. cold. Yeah. Mm. Put layers nah, and layers I, I, I like the heat too. I like the heat too still. But, no. like, I like it moderated. So, when it's windy and it's hot. Mm. Yeah, that's how I like it. Not like when you're just still and it's on the stuffy and all humid. Yeah, you should move to Abuja, man. What are you doing? No, no, no. <laughs> where I live in Abuja's Lagos hot, is by know? the beach, boy. They, there's wind. I could open oh, one window yeah, yeah. and open the other window, and then the whole wind blows through. Mm-hmm. And then I could just sit down and watch TV. I don't have to put the AC on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, fair, fair, fair. okay, that's that's right. Have, have you ever had a moment where you were like, yeah, I'm going back? Um, I haven't had a moment where I'm like, I'm going back, but I've had moments where I'm like, this is more much more difficult. Than I, <laughs> this is much more difficult than I thought. Like it's, I get that every two days. Oh, hey, yeah, it's, it's big moments. It's big moments. I think for me, the most difficult part was NYSE, the process. Ooh, why? For me, that's because when you because luckily I moved back to Nigeria. I spent a whole year in Lagos, chilling, vibing, mm-hmm. partying, mm-hmm. getting out of my system before I did my NYSE. If I had gone straight into that. I might not have lasted because mm-hmm. as soon as I got onto the camp, like I was like, I, I don't know if I can do this. Really, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it. My friends all that knew me told me I wouldn't survive in my AC. They said was... there's no bathroom. They said they were you in the bush. Freak out. They're at me. You were like, no, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, and the you way that someone says that, that. when I see flooding and like, I'm like, I'm not getting out of the car. <laughs> So I would definitely would have survived camp boy. Yeah, and so, the way the way they talk to you as well, and they try to prove a point because like you're 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 like militant. a corporate, yeah. and they're trying to I be like, yeah, do this, do that, and then it's like, and you're used to just not being treated like yeah. that. And then this person is like, who is this person? Like, and 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 it's just like the whole environment, it's 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 a nightmare. And then going to do your thing every week, mm. but. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that I waited a year to do it. Yeah. My brother moved back and did it straight, and away. Did it straight away, and he 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 left. He flunked he, out. Oh, really? He, he left the country. Yeah, that's your first experience of he Nigeria. Dipped. You might that shit. Yeah, he he yeah, yeah. If I, any advice I'd give is just like, just do the NYC when you're ready to do it. Yeah, don't don't rush don't it. Don't just rush, don't rush it. it. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So you have the Pan African podcast. Like I've listened to a couple of episodes. I really enjoyed it. You were talking about one guy was talking about exporting like hibiscus, ginger. Mm-hmm. You had another girl talking about exporting um, cannabis mm-hmm. as well. So what's what inspires you to start the podcast mm-hmm. and how's that going? Um, for me, I'm I'm big on economics. I'm big on um, so one of the uh, intellectuals that I follow the most in the US is called Claude Anderson, Dr. Claude Anderson. He wrote mm-hmm. a book called Powernomics and okay. it talks about how um, for black America to be liberated, they need to practice group economics. Mm, so right, like, yeah. you know, money circulating the same, yeah. within your community. Mm. So I just extrapolate that and put that on an African scale, right? Rather than within a black community on an intra africa scale. Mm. And um, I believe that, you know, if we want to grow African industry and employment and all that, we need to boost trade within Africa. And so that's kind of been my thing since I moved back, just trying to either educate people about mm. you know intra-africa trade or right. promoting intra-africa Very trade important. or anything to boost trade within africa mm. mm-hmm. that's kind of been my shtick since i moved back so mm-hmm. yeah so that's when the pod that's how the podcast kind of started it started off in like clubhouse i would talk to people yeah. and i met some really intelligent people that are doing big things mm-hmm. nice. and then i was just like look 
people need this information. Mm. People Facts, want to yeah. learn how to export. People want to learn Facts. what it takes to get into whatever industry. Mm -hmm. So why not just educate people about it? Because you know what put me off, yeah? So I had like a close family member like, yo, if you need things from America, like I'll send it. We can do this import exporting thing. But what has put me off is the damn lubricant. <laughs> I ain't got time to keep to be, asking you for lube, right? I ain't got time to be bribing no customs officer and to be selling. I just don't have the energy. Like, you don't have to pick your battles in this Lagos. Mm, yeah. I don't have the time for them to come and tell me. Do you know how many times I've been on Instagram and see women crying saying, ah, oh, it's too hard though. Imagine I had these goods for this and long they're and they're asking mm. for this money. The prices, you're killing my business. Mm. So how have you navigated? Do you need to have an in, like inside person, honestly? To... Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, I think a lot of things in Nigeria is like, you get better contacts the longer you're in the system. So like I can give like mm, NAFDAQ as an example. Like when I first started doing my NAFDAQ process, mm. yeah, you walk into the NAFDAQ office and you meet the first person you see and that's your guy. <laughs> but then, you know, that's your guy, right? And he has to work with him you have to, to where he stops, him. his power stops exactly. as well. I can't wait his power stops, that's so true. And then, you, and then you start networking, meet other people, and you're like, oh, by the way, I know the director general of blah, blah, blah. And then you get his number and then things move way faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the same thing with imports and export is like, the longer you're in the system, the better the contacts you make. You mm -hmm. get better freight forwarders, better customs people. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, it's 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 like you just gotta be patient, but you're gonna yeah. lose money along the way. Live and learn. That's why I can't. That's why I can't deal with. But you got but you got meet people who've been through that that you can just skip that. That's what I'm saying. That's why networking is important because sometimes you might meet someone that's. It's the only thing that's that. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like going through of, that again, boy, is long. That's what like imagine people coming to Nigeria and they're going through the whole process all of again. it yeah. the things I've heard yeah, I've even for NAFTAC registration, it's going into millions of naira for per product. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you don't do yeah, it right. Somebody, somebody said that to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah, said yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. and it's not it's the lubricant that yeah, makes yeah. it that way. It's not the actual price Naftaq, of the yeah, service. Yeah, yeah. It's the lubricant that runs each product because Naftak is I didn't know it's per product. It's not by the brand. Yeah. yeah. So you need to get Naftak registration. If you've got eight products, you need it for each of your products. Each of the product, They'll yeah. rinse you out. Don't yeah. don't get me started on Naftak <laughs> because Just no, us. the one thing that annoys me is that like in the UK, if I want to start selling a chocolate brand, mm. I just go into my kitchen and make and it. I make chocolate. And I buy the packaging and I put it on the chocolate and, mm. and, and that's it. Like maybe I might get someone from the council to get health to and check, safety. Yeah, yeah, check my facility. Certificate, yeah. But, no, but I don't need to like build anything. It just comes to my kitchen and they're like, say for example, I was doing like um, markets in the UK and they just the lady from the council came. She was like, okay, make sure that the stuff for your personal use is in this box and the stuff for your business is in that box. Nigeria, like... I have to build a factory. Mm, for oh, them to, really? Yeah. yeah. Them like, to actually... you, you can't, like, so you have to have your production room, your packaging room, your filling room. You've got to this. build the whole factory. And, then you, and you think why we don't export more and why we're in the situation we're in when they're making it so hard for people to even get into that business. This, this environment, you taught me the word, it's a disabling environment. It's, disabling it's environment. disabling. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Like, in, like, luckily, like, I come from a, let's put it in quotes like privileged background mm -hmm, right so mm -hmm. i can i can do that but like mm -hmm. imagine like someone that's just literally she's just even if you come from a privileged background we're all young we all move back in our 20s yeah. we're all trying to build ourselves up like if yeah, i'm paying millions of naira per product i don't even want to get started no it's, for it's, me it put me off i was, I was tr trying to come and build some you know products yeah going on my holistic health <laughs> natural mosquito bite remedy <laughs> that didn't work what happened <laughs> <laughs> By the time it was that like, someone was selling me millions of naira for NAFTA, I'm like, is that actually okay? You know, no, that's why really? I love these people. That's why I love these people have products without NAFTA registration. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I'll, I'll give like a sh quick shout out. There's something called the Technology Incubation Hub, which is basically like um, we have one in Lagos, Port mm. Harcourt, Joss, different um, cities in Nigeria, and basically it's like the government where they build the NAFTA approved facilities, and you yeah. just come in and Ooh. just lease it. And then use it to do your stuff, and then that is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Hopefully, they can maintain it over time. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's it's good. Like, but not everybody knows about these things no, like this. No, so exactly. how, why do you, how do people get to know more about this kind not of? Not your network. Yeah. Your, your network. Mm. Uh, your network is so important because yeah. if you when you come as back as well, if you have any services, it's your network that's going to remember. Oh, okay. You're selling this. Oh, okay. Mm. I know someone that has this. So it's, it's mm -hmm. your network that will tell you these opportunities. Because mm. even online, Africans. One thing I've learned: Africans don't maintain information online. 
No, look at no. any government website or look no. at any company they don't do news releases like we do no. even the news most of their news is maybe like on Twitter or Instagram they don't actually have dedicated websites that much for news mm. so you have to hear about these things through the grapevine, grapevine yeah yeah. Mm. yeah yeah so the, know someone. like what have you done for fun in Lagos um to be honest like because when I was in the UK like in London I was having a lot of fun Really? Jeez. So wait, 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 I want to know what you're yeah, doing before you're in London. London. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> no, 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 start now, start now, man. Listen, boy, start what now. What are you up to in London? No, no, I mean, I mean, I have friends. We like to, we like to party. Let's just say that. So um, what? It went Shoreditch, Mayfair. Yeah, Shoreditch, May. Like, so when I was in my early twenties, I used to be a promoter. So oh, okay. Yeah, so what in London? Promoter. All these like West End clubs. Nice. What drinks? Play well, room. Well, well, shout out to our to snow bunnies. <laughs> All exactly. right. You want the snow bunny crowd? That's nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was doing that. <laughs> I was trying to just skip past that. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but no, but it's like that's a, they want, that's where the money is. Yeah, you were doing you were doing black race. Yeah. You did uni race, yeah, so your problem was okay. Yeah. 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 yeah but so, do you miss that lifestyle? Nah, because I feel like I, I you know, like <laughs> in a video game, you complete it. You yeah, just, you complete the game. I complete the game. Like I, I love what, that. What can you show me? That's what I said about London. Yeah, I said in London, what's the best part of the whole UK? Mayfair. Mm, Mayfair, yeah, that's I'm it. I'm going to Mayfair on a casual during the as in, mm, you, you work around Mayfair, you go out to the mm. restaurants in Mayfair. That means there's nothing more there you could show me yeah. in the UK. And Maybe, I'm really yeah. doing that. How old? Money so, wise, yeah. socially wise, sexually, I'm sorry, like everything <laughs> wise. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> everything. It's like, it's like you will friend. meet someone that will say the same thing as someone said, like, said, like I said last week. Do you know Let's what? go to this spot Facts. and go to this spot and do this and do that and do the Don't same know. thing. You know, since I moved to Nigeria, I said this to someone yesterday. I was like, you know what? Yeah, in London, I meet black people all the time. I don't meet anyone that wows me. In Nigeria, in mm. a week, I can meet two people that just wow me. Mm. You know, the environment breeds such special, special breed breeds people of people yeah, yeah. that I'm like, oh my days. What you grew up here and your mind is like this and you're doing this and you're achieving this. Mm. So like you meet different types of like special people here mm. every day mm. and there's never a dull moment at all here. Good and yeah. bad, but it's never true. a dull moment for me. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Focus on work. On work. If, if you were to live anywhere in Nigeria, where would you choose to live? Uh, that's a good question. Ah, uh, that's a good question. It, okay, we're talking about with the current security situation. <laughs> <laughs> right, this country does different, so safe. <laughs> different places are good for different reasons. <laughs> One place that I would love to live um, is Taraba State. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, because it's the most. I've even though I've I've seen videos of it, and even though I've never lived there, it's the most beautiful place in Nigeria. In my opinion. I I saw Sarah a video Bustay. on Tai. I don't know if Tai Anu where well, well, he went to one place in the north, and it literally, you know, when like you can see fields like just plain fields oh, mm. and just small trees like this, yeah. mm. literally. And Nigeria yeah. is beautiful. Up north is beautiful. Yeah. Even I've heard even Cross River, even the east is gorgeous. Yeah, Cross River. In nice. fact, anything outside of Lagos is the most disgusting place. It is a bit mad. <laughs> 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 I'm telling you, the last two days of rain oh, have yeah, taught yeah. me. I'm like, yo, we live in a ghetto. We, yeah. I did not realize Lagos, it. Lagos, no, yeah. Let's really like we can get so clouded by our fancy things around here, yeah? mm. but when you t- Take that take out. Back. You're in yeah, the you're yeah, in the trash. Yeah. You're in we're, the dustbin. We're, we're literally in, <laughs> in the dustbin. <laughs> what did you call it? A giant swimming pool. Or it's a giant dirty swimming pool. <laughs> no, but you know what? I, I I don't know if you guys agree. I think Nigerians are too calm. They need to be more upright. I think about we that. accept. Yeah. I think yeah. I think, we accept I think, mediocrity. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'm mm. learning. I don't know. Again, and this just goes down to like having a soft landing. I think my mentality has been protected a bit until the last two days. <laughs> what I've seen with the rain that's happened the last two days, I'm like, yo. I'm not gonna lie. It's a bit mad. Maybe I'm coming from a privileged perspective. We need to campaign for this. You can't accept this lie. You can't. Yeah, no, no. But we, we, we. To, like Fela was talking about it, like suffering and smiling. Like that's what that's what we've been like since. A we very suffer long... and smile. Yeah, we just I suffer think, and I think smile. I, 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 millennials need to millennials need to wake up. None of this protesting for one day, two days. We yeah. actually need to find a group of a group of people that we can actually fight. Yeah. You know, and our generation, we like to banter and stuff. No one's willing to die for True. change. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah. where we're struggling because yeah. what people are going through with electricity, mm. what people are going through with police, yeah. what people are going through with like basic amenities in this same Lagos mm. that makes yeah. so much money for the continent. Yeah. It's, huge. It's, it's It's madness. I agree. I agree. One thing I put on my status the other day, might be a bit deep, but basically I was thinking about it and how a lot of 
powerful, like revolutionary people in Africa, they often get like coerced or they might get bribed or they might get kind of taken away from Every the way after a while. Yeah. So yeah, what facts, I was yeah. thinking is like, what we need in Africa is like, you know how you have like micro influencers, mm. okay. like you need like micro then. revolutionaries, like like, here, like yeah. loads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not like me, but like you know what I mean, like just loads of a lot of s small revolutionaries. Because mm. then it's like harder to just take someone from the top and be like, "Oh, just you're the only one, yeah." Billion, and then it's he's like. So we just need loads of people doing the right thing, but no one really wants to take that role of. But being... I think it's happening though because like we're not in the politics yet. Mm. But I think on the private sector, people are started thinking. Going to politics, doctor. You look like a politician. That's for sure. Jesus Christ. Niggas got the walking stick on set. <laughs> are you man seeing the walking stick? By the way, because when I saw this today, I was like, "What's going on?" That <laughs> like, it's emphasizing your point. You know what you're making the point. You got. <laughs> <laughs> you got emphasis. No, no, but seriously, like I think we're in the private sector now, or, mm. or a couple of people in the private sector who are intelligent doing stuff, right? Mm. I feel like as you grow more power in the private sector, grow more wealth, then mm. you have time to play in the politics. Yeah. We're not at that stage where yeah. we can play in politics to a huge level. Yeah. But some yeah. people are going in with, with sponsored got, I know, money. I know yeah. at least two to three people that I know that are in politics that are under under the age of 30 that are in politics. Mm. Mm. Young people mm. that I've entered, they're doing House of Reps, all three of them. That's yeah. good, but yeah. I didn't, I didn't know puppets though. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's still the fact that the, your true things that you want to put across you need a lot of I don't believe it. I don't know about force. you. For me, I, I'm a free spirit. Mm -hmm. Politics is I scratch my back, you scratch yours. Mm -hmm. For that reason, it doesn't entice me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when it comes to Africa, especially Nigeria, I believe the private sector is who's going to make the biggest impact. That's yeah. right. No, I, yeah. However, you do need your friends in the government. But yeah. me as an individual playing that game, I don't have the energy for it. Mm. No, I feel you. know I'm not, I'm not a politician. I'm never going to be a politician. Yeah. It, it's just not, I don't like it. Um, but I, I see what you're saying. I think that the private sector is... The, but the thing is, they've got to let the private sector do it. They've got yeah, to yeah, yeah. deregulate. They've got to, like, privatise. Mm. Otherwise... But you see people like Ian, right? The guy that um, started Flutterwave and um, Andela. Mm -hmm, like, he's mm -hmm. building, like, a tech little village. I like and, that. Yeah. In, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it's about... When you make that success, you pass it back. I like that, yeah. So you don't have to be a politician per se, but yeah, you, you can, can do, do stuff. stuff. No, I believe, yeah. in the private, I, believe, I believe in the private sector, but th what you said is so important because someone said to me, one of my, our young people in our group, they were like, what if the government just makes a law that outlaws our business? Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. they, they do that sometimes. They do, but they do <laughs> they do, do that. that all the time. You can wake up one day and see Instablog and it's like the government has banned this mm, or the yeah. government has outlawed this and your whole business idea is mm. in the gutter. Now look yeah. what happened to Gokada. When, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the perfect in, yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. They had Gokada, to change their crypto, business model. Like, mm. Crypto as well. So that's why now I've become a bit more Pan-African in mindset because Nigerians, we have this whole giant up African mentality, but it's so mm. myopic. We mm. behave like Americans. Mm. You know how like Americans, yeah, 56% of them or whatever the statistic is, they don't even have a passport. Mm. They think they're the biggest on earth. Yeah. They don't really look outside. I feel mm. Nigerians have that, if I'm not careful, a lot of Nigerians have that mentality. Whereas the more I learn about other African countries, mm. the more I learn, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. a lot of them have a more enabling environment than we can ever imagine. Oh, no, yeah, facts. Facts. Yeah, 100%, yeah. 100%, 100%. That's why, you know what I mean? Pan-Africa, Pan-Africa. Mr. Pan-Africa. You know yeah. yeah. you know, the plan is there because yeah. literally, look, you can't rely on just one African country. Never. No, literally. no, no. You no matter how attractive it is, you have to, you have to cast your neck bigger mm. and look at the whole of Africa as, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. as an opportunity. It, it might sound bad, but I'm not necessarily patriotic to the really? name, to the word Nigeria. Really? Because for me, like, it's a, it's a colonial construct. Uh, yes, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's another one. Nigeria, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's like, I mean, yes, I, I love my people and I want to make Nigeria work, but... I'm just as African as I am Nigerian, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, um, like I went. One of my friends is from Sierra Leone, and mm. I went to his. I went to his country, and I was like, "Amazing! Why are you in London?" Mm. I was like asking him, "Like, oh, this really? is, your, your country is better like than that. like yeah, one, of the, one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever yeah. been to in my life." Really, so, yeah. and they've got coastal areas, well, and they've yeah. got nice and houses like, all the way up. Exactly, it's like yeah. it's like hills, hills houses yeah. on the hills, looking at, at the, the beach. beach. Yeah. And one of the is it's. And you I see like, what I'm saying? What? We're about to move. We're out Winter here travel. swimming in brown water in Lagos. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, this Lagos here, you've got me for a few years, but I'm gonna jump. <laughs> what I've seen with my two eyes this week, yeah, it's crazy. Nah, let's let's play this game quickly, though. This is a game we'll play where we pick up a card, right, okay. and then okay. we you say something that's in there. 
And yeah, I think Salema definitely has more questions. She's like, oh. <laughs> I have a question. I want to okay. yeah. Do you right, ask cool. it first or do no, you No, no, go for it. Okay, no, this this has been answered already. But let's check. It's a new one. Uh, let's see this one. What kind of questions? Are these deep questions? They're not no, really deep. It's general. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Is the society welcoming to people who move back? So oh, do you think, know. yeah. Do you think like, uh, it was it welcoming, welcoming to you as someone who's moved back um i never felt unwelcome but i feel like if i was flexing my englishness <laughs> i would have i would have got it would have been more difficult really yeah because like sometimes people take the piss like because they hear the accent facts like, oh see this guy's when I first moved back, one of the guys asked me, like, wait, do you have passport issues or something? I was like, Man. Yeah, I had somebody ask me literally just yesterday. They asked you, do you have passport you, issues? No, they, no, they asked yeah. me, like, don't you get all the time people ask you, why would you move back to Nigeria? Yeah. But what I realized is, of my friends, a lot, most of my friends are diaspora, but my friends that are Niger Nigerian, they're people that have been to the UK mm. and they decided, mm. they're homegrown, went to the UK and they saw the UK for what it was a, and they chose Nigeria for the UK. Said, yeah. Those mm. type of people, we end up being close mm. because as a startup founder, you can't be around negative energy mm. yeah. so if you're around someone that's like oh nigeria this this negative the ghetto the ghetto mm. we're never going to be close because mm. you need to have that someone kind that gives like you hope. said yeah, that yeah, hope. Yeah, gives you, hope. you need yeah, to yeah. have the positivity we know what it is like we said mm. there's no the light is not 24 7 mm. people are swimming in water god forbid it rains yeah <laughs> cars are packing up in the rain and all that so yeah, we know yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're we realistic know what about what it is but regardless there's still a can-do mentality. Mm, yeah. If you haven't got a can-do mentality, I can't be around you here because yeah, it's very yeah, negative. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I've also heard though that Ghanaians are more welcoming than Nigerian people. Really? really? Yeah. I haven't been to Ghana yet. I've not Ghana been there. Late. I've Ghana's heard people late. tell me Ghana is more welcoming. But yeah. police stopped us in Ghana when I went there though. Really? I just And I just, I didn't feel safe. Like I will feel safe with Nigerian really? police. And that was so weird. That's because really? you're out of your, your Because your I just thought like, okay, like how do you, do you give them money? Do you speak the language? Like, because mm. I just be like, I get off, I'll say something. Or, yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah. you can, you you can relate a little bit. Yeah. But this was a Ghanaian police. I just thought, hmm, what do I do? What do I do in this situation? Like, yeah. really? Yeah. It yeah, felt, yeah, it felt, yeah. it felt, that's not, now I feel, now I see how if someone from a different country comes to Nigeria and they get stopped by a the police, mm. they can feel, they can feel scared. Yeah. yeah if yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah, understand, yeah, yeah. if you don't crazy? understand the relationship. When I was with Nigerian police, me, I called her, I said, I'm Dangote's daughter. <laughs> I caught right there, right there, and I made my friend calls. I said, Oh, good. <laughs> they stopped me. <laughs> I said, like, Are you actually insane? Because otherwise, you yeah. need to make them feel like this is not the time. Exactly, not the time. Okay, not the but time. If, if, if you're in the middle of Ghana, nowhere, what do you say? Like, do, like, do they know? And some of them, I mean, what I've heard is because of Nigerians, they've made a bad reputation. Some of them might not actually mess with Nigerians. Yeah. Well. No, they don't. Like, I've, I've heard that. They don't. They, they, Nigerians struggle to travel. Um, in other African countries because mm. of the reputation that's yeah. wild some people, but some people mess it up like you, I mean it's not like the reputation comes out of nowhere I think some people just I have that philosophy I think every stereotype is a stereotype for a reason yeah. Yeah. I have there's, that there's, philosophy there's, 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 yeah, there's facts there's stats but to end on a positive note mm -hmm. what is your favourite thing about Nigeria Ooh. Um, what's the favourite thing about Nigeria I think there's freedom now, the thing is, like, freedom in the UK is different from freedom in Nigeria. Mm. I, I posted a status the other day, and it was a picture of a guy who had, like, 20 chickens strapped to the top of his car. Mm. And I was like, you can't do that in the UK. Yeah, yeah there's no way. <laughs> That's a different kind First of First of all, there's, like, four different offences. Within, within two minutes, yeah. police are, like, round the corner. It's a different kind of freedom. AMPR will pick up your plane quickly. <laughs> You can, you can literally like go out on the road you can put up an umbrella and sell stuff <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean you can like, just wake up and hustle no it's a lawless country no, 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 that's, what, that's what attracted me in the UK country, like yeah. what set up like just a market store, do you like, know that a lot of people are not registered their business is not registered in Nigeria of no of course yeah. I know that like yeah. it's actually it's, 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 it's people get so surprised when they see like a registration certificate yeah, they're like 100%. oh you're from a business <laughs> Big man, no, this literally, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so mad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not that. So yeah. I, I, I like, I like that freedom. I like the, I like. I mean, it's not particular to Nigeria, but I like the weather because I was kind of getting tired of the cold. I was, I, I had enough. I had okay, enough. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad that I can't think of that many things off, off the top mm. of my head. But All right, if you if you were the president, last question, if you were the president of Nigeria, what's one thing that you were going to implement? First thing, state police. Mm. S- second thing, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna privatize a lot of things, a lot of things. I'll Privatization, privatize, yeah. Just privatize the whole. Would you but privatize? Would you privatize the, the road infrastructure? Yeah, privatize it. Um, even the power sector, but obviously private, because what happened with the power sector is that they privatized, but they didn't do it right. So you've got to vet the people, make sure they have mm. enough money, they can actually manage what they're saying. Yeah, like, like Pam Africa, by the way, pamafrica.com. Pam yeah, Africa. check out Pam Africa, you, yeah. can, you can sort you out with power. Yeah, if you have <laughs> so any power so problems, come through. Yeah. But yeah. no, but it's true that the whole, I, um, but the funniest thing is that, yeah, so right now, what I know is that there's a lot of issues when it comes to people collecting payments, mm. right, from people using energy so mm, not like everybody not, yeah not everybody's paying for their electricity mm-hmm. nobody, nobody, so all the investment that they want to put into infrastructure mm. they're not getting it back they're not getting any results back people are not paying for their bills so yeah, exactly because of that reason there's a lot of people there's a lot of issues there as well so but yeah. obviously there's more but that's yeah, a, yeah. a very no, key but that's one. one of the most because the thing is with the power sector is that people most people don't understand how it works yeah so true. people think they're like oh we're not generating enough electricity yeah but like generation is just one part there's the distribution, distribution yeah, transmission yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. like people hear oh egypt is generating this night but like if the generation companies are not making the money back from right. the distribution companies, yeah. why would you generate more? Exactly, it doesn't make so, any sense. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the biggest issues. But I don't know how you. That's state it. policing. I want to talk about how, like what what do you think state policing would bring? Do you think it would make sure everywhere is more? Do you think it's more safer? Do you think there yeah. will be more bribery going on? No, I think that like first of all, localized policing. So like like the policeman can be like my cousin. Like so, everyone knows each other. So like if something mm. goes wrong, like it's much easier to know like. I think I think African economies, um, sometimes African countries, there's a lack of accountability for mm. citizens mm. and there's a lack of consistent accountability. Mm. What that means is if, if I get caught for having um, Rizla paper on mm. me, one person is getting a 100K fine, one person is getting 10K fine. Mm. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. So with the policing, I think there needs to be standardized policing first mm-hmm. where, you know, the bribery comes down a bit. Mm. I know that if I get caught for something, this is what I'm doing. If I do a U-turn, I know it's not 100K. I know it's, mm. you know, yeah. that needs to be sorted out first for me even where, rather than where, what state the policeman comes from. Because mm, yeah. whether he comes from your Taraba state or he comes from our Ondo state, mm. he's still asking the guy how far, yeah. how much have you got for me? But what what's the what do you think is the biggest problem in Nigeria right now? Me? Yeah. I was limited to three. I say logistics, security, and energy. If you solve those, because Nigerians are so productive, yeah. as it is, yeah. give them 24-hour electricity. It's a yeah, game changer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Then you now sure. give them roads. Listen, I, even v, in VI, for me, yeah. there's no ro- Even there's, in yeah. the VI, yeah. The, in, even on the island, there's roads where kings live. That mm. you're, that not driving, you're driving on gravel. Mm. Do you like, know what I mean? Mm. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that can do per second? You're king of the that dirt. you can get somewhere faster, that mm. you can come home. Like, people are working. They want to work hard. If your electricity goes out, how can you work? Mm. But how can you solve? The, how would you solve the security then? How would I solve security? Yeah. I don't have the answers for that. State police. Is that what you think it is? Yeah. I don't know. I have to look into. It. I, I State never police took a is a very good know. idea. That's I, best, I never took a word. So no, because I don't know. tech the is also is good. We're, we're saying we're a federal republic, but we don't practice federalism. No, we don't practice in America, like you have so many different police departments. You have LAPD just for. No, LA. we have many in America. There hasn't many police departments. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So we need to like. But it's still corrupt. Mm. Yeah, of course, of course. But you so, need to regionalize everything. You need everyone I to control I just don't think that's own. the final solution. You know I what? Think, I, think it's, I think Africans need accountability. Like You know how we brag just now that Nigeria is a lawless country? Mm. I think that alone is where problems need to be solved. Mm. Whether mm. you have regional police or non-regional police, that's not gonna, you're going you're gonna to have somebody from Lagos State Police in you. That's not going to make any difference. In fact, especially in this Lagos that we're all worried. If you have a Lagos police officer, he's not going to treat you any better. Mm. The issue is that constitution the issue is how the police behave mm. it should not be normalized that every time everybody's getting to a checkpoint they're panicking they don't know if they mm. should give money or not give money mm. they don't know if they've got something that they should it, sh- it needs mm. to be standardized policing mm. but you know the thing is what i think you're you're focusing on is just one part of the policing you're, you're focused on like the police collecting money from people and harassing mm. people and all that enforcement yeah yeah but i think the bigger problem is terrorism I mean, there's many problems. For example, a local homegrown Nigerian, I'm privileged, right? Mm. We're all privileged here. 
uh, if somebody gets raped or maybe their car gets stolen or something, or even somebody I've heard, when you have a health issue and you go to the hospital, maybe you were stabbed, you need to go to the police station. Wow. What happens when they go to the police station? They need to pay. Mm. I've heard as much as 30K needs to be paid before mm. you can report a rape or before you can report something. Mm. These yeah. are the type of things I'm talking about. We need yeah. standardization of the law. That's mm. why I say it's not. It's deeper than 1K. How much is, we all, are we not, like I said, Nigerians are calm. They pay the, the 1K the, every there needs time. To be, there needs to be people policing the police. There needs to be a bit of like mm. check on the police. You know it's saying? just accountability. Accountability. For, for Although that will still be infiltrated, but like it needs to be like as tight as they would make the FCC tight. Mm. Just, obviously, the FCC is as tight as we see because if you see them working, mm. but it doesn't mean that nothing's going on in the background. But we need to make sure that someone's policing the police. Yeah, mm. it's because about accountability. It's literally like you can have those people there and it, and it, it should also be tech enabled products. That yeah, could yeah, help leverage, tech, yeah. leverage, yeah. I know some people are building some stuff around Bi that. I've seen a few biometric startups yeah. that are um, trying to, and yeah. also some people are doing some mapping tools where they kind of identify areas of issues and reporting yeah. and using like mm. crowd sourcing for information. So mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. are products going out there, but they need to be more tech enabled products that can help solve security issues. Um, and it, just the way Uber came in and he held held drivers accountable, mm -hmm. right? There should be products around that that can hold the police accountable. Yeah, true. Do you understand? True, so, because you wouldn't imagine getting to someone's, someone in Nigeria, imagine like five, like 15, 15 years ago, somebody said, oh, just enter a random car that will pick you and drop you somewhere else. Mm. You wouldn't do that, but you do that with Uber now in Nigeria. Because of the tech, yeah. Yeah, because You're of right. the tech, tech yeah. It's security, it, it, yeah. it enables trust, it enables security, it enables accountability. Point, yeah. mm. So, there needs to be stuff around that. Um, yeah. Interesting. We'll get there. We'll get, there. we'll get there. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, nice having you, Malobi, man. Thank you Definitely. for having me. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, we'll keep an eye on Pan Africa. If any new progress, Please, let us know. Guys, listen to Pan African podcast. Yeah, Pan African yeah. traders. Right? Pan African traders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. panafricantraders.com. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm a bit disappointed. I didn't have any controversial questions. No egusi. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a, it's been a good. We've pod. been together for a while, mm. but basically, he's just like the rest of them guys. I've already, I've already. Like, me, who me? Yeah, like yeah, the rest yeah. of who? All, so all, I, all I know is that there'll be an I move back dating <laughs> show coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, girls. Yeah, no matter what, every man is the same. <laughs> lies, lies. Don't believe her. Lies, lies, lies. No, there's, there's good ones out there. <laughs> just but you just got to be no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just gotta be ready for the truth. You gotta be ready for the no, truth. We're really? ready. We're because ready. I feel like I feel like a lot of women they want they want a perfect man, but the perfect man doesn't exist. Yeah, so 100%. if a man that's imperfect and he's telling you the truth, yeah, we like that. Don't don't hate on no, that. You, are, are you not as close as perfect as possible? Um, I'm no, I'm not even gonna pretend like I am. I am. That's unhealthy. Far that's from an unhealthy. It. I'm like that. It's an unhealthy mindset. Really, you're thinking yeah. close to perfect. You can't chase perfection all the time. Mm. I, I think some of us will still try, but you, you, I've been, especially in this Nigeria, <laughs> you'll hate yourself because the environment is fighting against you all the time. So I'm that perfection you. you're chasing, you'll Where, just wear yourself out. And, and then you meet a girl that you like, and then she'll start. Anyway, bullying you no yeah exactly stop so, poking you you know you look at a girl checking you out you know in the uk you don't have that issue yeah, yeah, you don't true. you don't go to a bar and the think, transactional is, stuff is right? this girl the girl the runs girl yeah. you don't you don't you go into a bar most girls are just normal it just yeah you yeah. don't pay but here it's like okay like is she sitting by herself does she have a drink is she with someone else you gotta Bear analyze analysis, it yeah I just, just be diving up. in head first and then <laughs> we know <laughs> just dive in and we find know. out <laughs> <laughs> you just diving in head first yeah but man. yeah no you need to definitely <laughs> learn your lessons in Nigeria man definitely but yeah. as a man right in Nigeria do you feel like you 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 can see yourself settling down here with a wife children and everything yes but I might not I might not marry a Nigerian woman, but if 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 I meet the right one, definitely. You might not marry a Nigerian woman. That's a huge statement. I, I don't know, like, cause I don't know. I haven't found a woman that like makes sense to me. But if if <laughs> I if I <laughs> makes if sense I, to me. But if I if I meet one and I have really okay, I have a weird criteria. I have one. There's one thing that I'm looking for in most Nigerian women, and, and I've never been able to find it. Go ahead. Okay, brace yourself. I want to marry a Nigerian woman that wears her natural hair most of the time. Mm. Then go to the village. <laughs> no, no. I was like that. Really? Yes. I'm like that. People that know me, in fact, you, if you think about it when you first met me, I always have my natural hair out all the time. Cap. <laughs> Oh 
<laughs> my what? Are you laughing as well in the background? Or what's going on here? Because he knows I've been with him. I have my natural hair. I have uh, my natural hair. Really? All as in, I could take this off now. My natural hair looks exactly like this. The point of the matter is, yeah, it is hard to manage black hair and stuff. That's why I hear. That's what they say. No, because I, I don't like girls. So let me say, it's multifaceted. I can actually mm. provide insight on this. One mm. thing I don't like about London girls, London girls would be like, oh, white people make us feel like our natural hair is so unprofessional, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Yeah, okay, white people make you feel like your hair is unprofessional, but so what? Who gives a fuck? Mm-hmm. In fact, when I wore my natural hair, all the white men in the office were like, oh, we love your hair like this. They'll be like, oh, well, I love your hair. And I'm like, it's my natural hair. They're like, oh my God, I love it like this. But the thing, the point of the matter is, we're also girls, we like to switch up. For me, yeah. it's not about that. It's yeah. about switching up, right? Yeah, but yeah. then again, it's about it's about obviously what your peers think about you as well. So a lot of girls do care about what their peers think about them. Yeah. Well, a natural like, hair is something that they wouldn't, the, the girls yeah. would, their peers would not think looks good. Girls always want the latest wig. I'm seeing wigs yeah, with the 400K, you're, you're, the 300K you're using, now you're, you're, The girls that you have to figure out whether they're runs, babes or not, that's what you're using to judge everybody. <laughs> that's why. That's, that's all I see, right? <laughs> Wait, but okay, but you say like, black women like to switch it up, but then you find it weird that like, white women, don't wear black hair on their head. No, but no, we no. wear white hair. White of hair course hair. I do. Honestly, I'm telling you, of course I I'm telling you, I agree with this topic because I was very big on this whole natural hair movement. I follow all the natural hair influences. What happened? But... I'm having a break. Literally, that's what I'm I realized. think after that statement, Joe's gonna go and get natural hair. Don't no, worry. I can take this off right now. You'll see my hair is literally there's not that's not much difference. Honestly, yeah. I swear to you, sometimes you just want a break. Mm, I feel mm. you. you want a different look. No, I feel you. I feel it you, gives you a different you can you can So you... there's nothing wrong with men wanting different food in different days. No, it's a <laughs> <laughs> full circle. Full circle. On that note, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>